Fabergé, perhaps the world's most iconic artist jeweller, having produced such works of art as the Automata, Hearthstone sculptures, and of course, the legendary Fabergé eggs. Dugoscopy TV is in Switzerland, a final resting point of the founder of Fabergé, to uncover the history behind the most revered name in jewellery. Fabergé eggs have been owned by the world's richest, as well as most renowned leaders, such as Tsar Alexander III and Tsar Nicholas II. Fabergé was also ordered to produce similar eggs to the Rothschild family and the Yusupovs. Having survived the bloody revolution and drastic events of World War II, the unique bejeweled pieces became part of the collection for Queen of the United Kingdom, Elizabeth II, as well as collector Malcolm Forbes and Russian entrepreneur Victor Vexelsberg. Gustave Fabergé founded the jeweller in 1842, though it's through his son, Peter Carl Fabergé, that the brand started to attract international attention. He had become official goldsmith to the Russian imperial court and was instructed by the then Tsar, Alexander III, to create the first imperial Easter egg. The lavish designs and incredibly intricate detail were heralded as genius, and so tradition of an imperial egg each Easter was created. I think one of the greatest descriptions that I've ever heard about Fabergé is that it essentially has a French sensitivity with a Russian soul. Okay. And what some people don't know is that the Fabergé family were originally from France and migrated through Europe and ended up in Russia. And the name, the surname, was in fact amended ultimately to come up with the Fabergé name. In total, Peter Carl Fabergé made 50 bejeweled eggs for the Russian royal family between 1885 and 1916. The level of complexity of creating both the pre-1917 and also the modern day Fabergé pieces is quite frankly incredible. And the fusion of the craftsmanship, the design and the ingenuity at the end of the day is what underscores the value of Fabergé. Each egg is said to symbolize a particular development in time, with the Trans-Siberian Railway egg of 1900 symbolizing the nearing end of the railway's completion. This linked European Russia with Russia's Pacific coast, and the very last egg created in 1916, the Cross of St. George, was to be, rather tragically, the final creation of its kind. The Russian Revolution in 1917 brought about an abrupt end to both the Romanov dynasty as well as the House of Fabergé. It is often said that the tragedy that befell the Imperial Romanov family led to the degree to which Fabergé is known internationally. I don't personally buy into that theory. I certainly think it helped to spread the renown of the name. But at the end of the day, for me, what it comes down to is that rarity drives value. And the fact is that the pieces that were manufactured in 1917 are so special and so rare and so difficult to replicate that that determines the valuations that people place on these Fabergé pieces. Posing as a courier to the British Embassy, Peter Carl Fabergé made his escape from Russia in 1918 and chose to reunite with his family in the city of Lausanne. It is said that he was unable to face the shattered climate and died two years later in Switzerland, though in 1924 his sons Alexander and Eugène pursued with the family name and moved to Paris to open Fabergé & Company that same year. Given the close relationship between the royal families in Europe and the frequent exchange of gifts, it is no surprise then that the British royal family proudly retained its Fabergé eggs. As it appears today, the eggs have moved from the then Imperial Russia to Switzerland, Paris, the US, and partially making it back to its homeland of Russia. Following an almost 100-year hiatus with many changes in ownership, the company is now looking to get things back on track with Gemfields. So yes, it was January of 2013 that Gemfields acquired Fabergé for stock at a little bit north of 90 million US dollars. It's of course very difficult to dis to today to say what the market would value Fabergé at. Gemfield's PLC has had a very significant upward trend in its share price over the last four or five years. And today it has a market capitalization of about $550 million. That's for the whole of Gemfield's PLC. 
Um, if somebody came with a very healthy premium to the original acquisition price and wanted to acquire Fabergé from Gemfields, the answer from Gemfields would be an outright no. Though to become the most revered name in jewellery, you must diversify. What a lot of people don't realise is that Fabergé actually has a very strong heritage in watchmaking. Pre-1917, many people will be familiar with some of the clocks that were manufactured by Fabergé. And I think the combination of the mechanical aspects, the automatons that Fabergé was famous for pre-1917, mean that it is very well placed to take forward the vision that we have for the world of watches, as is demonstrated by the Lady Complique Peacock watch. So Fabergé, which was once intrinsically linked with Imperial Russia, is now expanding across the globe. So yesterday evening was a remarkably special evening for the whole of the Fabergé team. In the ladies' high mechanical category, Fabergé had the privilege and the honour of being awarded a Grand Prix prize at the Grand Prix de Horlogerie here in Geneva. A tremendous accolade for the team that have worked very, very hard and I think really a rare achievement for us to have received this in the launch year of the watches. There are of course so many people that need to be thanked and our gratitude goes to all of the suppliers, the entire Fabergé team and I fortunately have the ability of showing that to the world. In 2008, Tatiana Fabergé, a great granddaughter of Peter Carl Fabergé, gave me a tiny sculpture of Peter Carl Fabergé. She asked that I put him on my desk so that he might keep a watchful eye and serve as a constant reminder of the responsibility that we bear to this legendary name. While Peter Carl did not get an official invitation to this evening's event, I have brought him with me anyway. French sensitivity with a Russian soul, Fabergé has had a remarkable history. Time will tell whether it has a bright future it deserves.